The original Colombo V12 engine is extremely important to the company. You see, it was the first engine that they themselves built, and it powered the 125S, the first Ferrari branded race car, and the engine would later be used in the first ever road going Ferrari as well. Now the builder of this important piece of Ferrari's history was an Italian engineer by the name of Guaccino Colombo. Now back when this engine was designed and built, Enzo Ferrari was unsure on how competitive it would be against the likes of Maserati and Jaguar. While Enzo would soon enough get his answer, on the 125's second time ever being raced, it took its first victory at the Grand Prix of Rome. The 125S won 6 of the 14 races in 1947, but unfortunately they weren't able to take home the first position overall in the racing series. But let's take a closer look at the engine that started it all. The engine is rather interesting. You see, the V12 found in the 125S is a 1.5 litre V12. Yes, it's a 1500 V12. The 125 designates the capacity of each cylinder. Multiplying it by 12 results in 1500 cubic centimeters, which is really small when you compare it to the V12s we see in Ferraris of today. Now before we go on, I just want you to realize how small those cylinders are. Each piston was only 55 millimeters in diameter. That's 2.1 inches. Now this engine features a single overhead camshaft per cylinder bank, two valves per cylinder and a trio of Weber carburetors. And when you ring her out, all the way to 6,800 RPM, she produced a whopping 118 horsepower, which sounds fairly unimpressive, especially for a V12, but remember, this was way back in 1947, and I mean the race car only weighed 650 kilograms, so she still would have had a bit of pep in her step. Then, in 1948, came the 125 F1, and this was Ferrari's first Formula 1 car. Now this F1 shared its engine with the 125S sports racer, but with some changes. In the F1 car, they added a supercharger into the mix. This raised the power output all the way to 227 horsepower, almost doubling the power. But unfortunately, the small V12 struggled to keep up with the top-end power of the 8-cylinder Alfa and the 4-cylinder Maserati. But Ferrari didn't give up. In 1949, they further improved the engine, adding dual overhead cams and a two-stage supercharger. Now these changes gave the car better top-end performance and a new power output of 260 horsepower. As a result, Ferrari took five Grand Prix victories after this championship. Now Enzo Ferrari loved building race cars, but he understood that he had to sell cars to the public to keep the business afloat. And this is how the brand started to sell race bread cars to the public. And in 1952, Ferrari released the Ferrari 250. Now for the 250, Ferrari enlarged the displacement of the engine to 3 liters, but the original Colombo design was still involved in the making of the new larger motor. Now this increase in displacement meant that Ferrari could drop the problematic supercharger system. The new 3 liter engine could make up to 300 horsepower in the racing versions. Interestingly, this engine is the engine that powered the 250 GTO, which is the most expensive Ferrari ever to sell at auction, going for a cool 70 million. Now this new redesigned Colombo V12 was mostly identical in design to that of the original 1500 V12, but this bump in size proved to be super successful in the world of racing. It was surprisingly lightweight, more reliable than the supercharged variant and made good power. Now, this 3 litre engine is also responsible for the first mid-engine sports prototype developed by Ferrari, the 250P. Interestingly enough, Enzo Ferrari resisted to move the engine at first. After the move though, they saw a lot of success at endurance events, such as Le Mans and Sebring, so he was quite happy with the move after he saw how good it was for racing. Then Ferrari leveled up the engine once again, in the 275, which featured a front engine 3.3 litre version of the motor which had a clean power output of 280 horsepower. Then, in 1967, the Colombo V12 was substantially reworked for the 1967 275 GTB-4. 
it still used two valves per cylinder, but with dual overhead cams, which it now used as well. These dual overhead cam motors also had a lot of work done in the heads. The valve angles were changed, and underneath the engine you could find a dry sump design, which had a huge 16 litre capacity for oil. Now these changes bumped the power up even more, and the four cam motors produced up to 330 horsepower. Now, on the racing side of things, they were also busy modifying and changing stuff in the Colombo engine. The 330 series entered the scene in 1963 with a 4 litre engine. They also used a wider bore spacing in the engine, paving the way for future displacement increases. The spark plugs were moved, and another change was that an alternator was used instead of the dynamo generated. The result, while well, these changes translated to outputs as high as 450 horsepower in the 330P and the 330 LMB, which is crazy power for the time. Now, at this time, the Colombo V12 has been used by Ferrari for 16 years, and Ferrari had no intention of swapping it out. In 1967, Ferrari released the 365 California, or as the press nicknamed it, the 365 Daytona and the 4.4 litre Colombo found in this car could carry this beast all the way to 170 miles per hour. So far all of the cars were great and the front engine Ferrari V12 was super successful. But then in 1976 Ferrari started getting lazy. The 400 and 412 series were nothing more than improvements from the 365 GT4 2 plus 2. But worse still, you could opt for a 3 speed automatic transmission. And yes, the weird thing, more autos were sold than manuals, even though these cars never officially made it into the US. Furthermore, the 400 was not exactly a poster child. It's known by many as the ugliest Ferrari ever to come from the Maranello based manufacturer. And this was pretty much the nail in the coffin for the Colombo V12. In 1973, Ferrari introduced the Berlinetta Boxer with the Boxer flat valve engine, which was later used in the Testarossa. And in 1992, the Colombo was officially replaced by an all-new engine design. But this engine was used by Ferrari from 1947 through to 1989. That's 42 years, making it the longest-running engine design that has ever been used by this Italian company. And as you saw in the video, without this engine, we don't even know where this company would be and what they would look like today. This engine powered their first race car, the first road car, and this engine was used in the first mid-engine prototype supercar. The Glumbo V12 engine is the engine that made Ferrari. But what do you think? Do you agree that this engine was highly important in the building of the company? Or do you think even if they started with something different, they would end up in the same place? Because it is possible with the drive that Enzo Ferrari had, they might have still made it to exactly the same place as now. But let me know what you think down below. If you, if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you did like it, you'll like all of the other stuff on my channel. So just go through it. See if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?